When we talk about poor people or poverty, we only tend to think of beggars on the road. However, all people who are poor are not beggars. Poor people could be laborers, landless farm workers, daily wage earners, and children working at roadside food joints and tea stalls. Before we proceed, let us look at a definition of poverty. Poverty can be defined as the lack of common things like food, clothing, shelter, safe drinking water, medical care, and education, which determine the quality of life. Poverty is a worldwide challenge. However, the problem is more severe in India. Nearly 25% of our entire population lives in poverty. This means India has around 26 crore poor people, which is the largest for any country in the world. Not all people living in cities are rich, and not all people living in villages are poor. Poverty exists in both urban and rural India. There are certain things that are common in the life of poor people in urban and rural India. These include hunger and malnutrition, lack of proper housing and shelter, they cannot get health care in case of illness, and have no regular job and income. There is also lack of sanitation and safe drinking water. There is no education for children who often work as child laborers. There is hopelessness about life and ill treatment from others who are better off. Mahatma Gandhi devoted his life to India's poor. He said poverty is the worst form of violence. He insisted that true independence for India will come only when its poorest people become free of suffering. Social scientists use different types of indicators to understand poverty. The most commonly used indicators relate to the levels of income of people and their consumption of goods. Now poverty is also observed using other social indicators like lack of education, health care, sanitation and safe drinking water. Social scientists these days are concerned about the concepts of social exclusion and vulnerability associated with poverty. Let us study these concepts in detail. The concept of social exclusion states that poor people have to live in poor surroundings excluded from neighborhoods of people who are better off. Social exclusion can be both an effect and a cause of poverty. A person may be forced to live in poor surroundings because he or she is poor. Also, a person may be poor because he stays in poor surroundings where he has no means to improve his income and situation. People living in slums are excluded from facilities and benefits like clean surroundings, good roads, and clean water supply that people who are better off enjoy. Social exclusion excludes people from equal opportunities of education, health care, employment and general quality of life. Vulnerability is the measure of the probability of certain groups of people becoming poor or remaining poor in future. Vulnerability is determined by the availability of options for employment, education and health care, etc. For example, landless farm laborers with limited options for education, health care and employment 
are more vulnerable to remaining poor in the years to come in comparison with farmers who own land. Vulnerability is also determined by the ability of people to handle bad times and natural disasters like earthquakes, floods and tsunamis. People who are already poor or do not have the means to cope with such hard times are more vulnerable to poverty in the times to come. The government has launched several welfare schemes for the poor. To ensure that these benefits reach the correct people, it is important to have a way to identify them. The poverty line is a commonly used way to identify the poor. It is a measure based on levels on income and consumption by people. The concept of poverty line is based on the fact that a person must have a minimum level of income and consumption to satisfy the basic needs of food, clothing, clean water, education and health care. When the income or consumption of a person falls below this minimum level, the person is considered to be poor. Poverty exists in all countries of the world. However, the minimum levels of requirement to determine the poverty line are different in different countries. While in the rich developed nations, a person may be considered poor for not owning a vehicle or a house, in the developing nations, not being able to buy two meals a day may be the criterion for poverty. In India, the determination of the poverty line takes into consideration the minimum requirements of food, clothing, footwear, fuel, power, education and health care for the subsistence of an individual. Food consists of many different types of items. So, how does one decide what is the minimum requirement of food? This is done by taking the minimum calorie requirement into consideration. In India, the minimum daily requirement is fixed at 2,400 calories per person in rural areas and 2,100 calories per person in urban areas. The difference in the daily calorie requirement in rural and urban areas is because people in rural areas do more physical labor and, therefore, need more calories. The cost of each item in the minimum requirements of food, clothing, footwear, fuel, power, education and healthcare is added up to find the minimum income required for a person to survive. In the year 2000, the monthly poverty line income was fixed at 328 rupees per person in rural areas and 454 rupees per person in urban areas. Note that though the calorie requirement for the people in rural areas is more, their poverty line income is less than the people in urban areas. This is because things are usually less expensive in villages than in big towns and cities. Also note that the poverty line income is fixed on a per person basis. Thus, to find the poverty line for a family, this monthly income is multiplied by the number of members in the family. The poverty line is revised periodically to accommodate rising prices and the changing requirements of people. This work is done through nationwide surveys conducted by the National Sample Survey Organization. Poverty line income is different in different countries. However, to draw comparisons between nations, the World Bank uses the standard poverty line income of one US dollar per person per day in all the developing countries. The graph here shows the change in the percentage of population living under the poverty line in India from 1973 to 2000. 
the percentages have come down. Yet, the percentage of poor in rural areas continues to be higher than in urban areas. Here's another graph that shows the number of poor people living under the poverty line in India for the period 1973 to 2000. Observe that though the combined poverty ratio came down from 54.9 to 36% between 1973 and 1994, the total number of poor people in India remained almost unchanged. This is due to the poor economic growth in addition to the rise in India's population during the period. Some groups and communities are more vulnerable to poverty than others. Some of the groups most vulnerable to poverty are people belonging to the scheduled castes and tribes, casual labourers in urban areas and landless farm labourers in rural areas. The graph here shows that 51 people out of every 100 people belonging to the scheduled tribes live below the poverty line. Similarly, 50 out of every 100 casual labourers in urban areas are poor. This figure is 47 and 43 for farm labourers and people belonging to the scheduled castes, respectively. All these figures are much higher than the national average where 26 out of every 100 people live below the poverty line. The situation is worse for people belonging to more than one of these most vulnerable groups. For example, a landless farm labourer who belongs to a scheduled tribe is usually poorer than other farm labourers belonging to higher castes. The scheduled tribes continue to be the most vulnerable group as studies show no decline in the poverty of these people. The other three groups, however, have shown some decline in poverty in the last decade. Even within a family, some people are more vulnerable and suffer more than the others due to poverty. These include the elderly, women and children, especially girl children. These people receive the least amount of care and share in the limited resources of the family. One of the biggest social evils associated with poverty is negligence towards the girl child. Girls are often considered a liability and are not given the same nourishment or opportunities for education as the boys. Poverty is a problem in all the 28 states and 7 union territories of India. However, the poverty ratio or the percentage of population living in poverty is not uniform all over the country. It varies across different states as you can see from the graph here. Orissa with a poverty ratio of 47% and Bihar with a poverty ratio of 43% are the two poorest states in India. Besides Orissa and Bihar, the poverty ratios in Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Tripura and Uttar Pradesh are also much higher than the All India Poverty Ratio of 26.1. At the other end of the graph, the states of Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, and Jammu and Kashmir, along with the Union Territory of Delhi, have the lowest poverty ratios in the country. Since the 1970s, there has been a general decline in the poverty ratios for all states in India. Here again, some states have done better than the others. In comparison with the poverty levels in the 1970s, the states that have shown the most significant decline in poverty are Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana, Gujarat, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The decline in poverty in Punjab and Haryana was driven by high agricultural growth rates 
after the Green Revolution in India. In West Bengal, the decline in poverty is associated with land reforms that aimed to improve the condition of small farmers and agricultural workers. In the states of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, a well-implemented public distribution system of food grains is the likely cause of the decline in poverty. Kerala has the highest literacy rate in India for both its male and female population. This focus on education and training and development of human resources has led to the decline in poverty in Kerala. Thus, we see that a high agricultural growth rate, land reforms, good public distribution system, and focus on education and training are some of the ways that poverty has been successfully reduced in India. Poverty is a global problem. However, its severity is different in different regions of the world. In this module, we will discuss comparative poverty ratios in different parts of the world with reference to the World Bank standard of poverty that includes all people living under one US dollar per person per day. As per the World Bank standard, the poverty ratio or percentage of population living below the poverty line in developing countries has come down from 28% in 1990 to 21% in 2001. The graph here shows the change in the percentage of people living under one US dollar a day in different regions of the world. As you can see, poverty has declined in most regions of the world like China, East Asia and Pacific, South Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean. However, the decline in poverty has been more rapid in some regions than others. For example, poverty in China and East Asia and Pacific regions has declined more rapidly than in South Asia. The rapid decline in poverty in China, East Asia and Pacific is associated with rapid economic growth and huge investments in human resource development in these regions. This economic growth was not matched by South Asian countries and therefore the decline in poverty has not been so rapid there. The situation is very different in Sub-Saharan Africa where the poverty ratio has actually risen from 41% in 1981 to 46% in 2001. Poverty has reappeared in some former socialist countries like Russia, where officially there was no poverty before. This graph shows the actual number of people in millions living under one US dollar per day in different regions of the world. The number of people living in poverty in China came down from 606 million in 1981 to 212 million in 2001. In comparison, the decrease in the number of people living in poverty in South Asia was marginal from 475 million in 1981 to 428 million in 2001. Here is another graph showing the comparison of poverty ratios of a few countries based on the World Bank standard of poverty. Note that the poverty ratio for India as per the World Bank standard appears higher than our national estimate of 26%, which is based on the Indian government's definition of the poverty line. Global leaders expressed their commitment to reduce poverty in the United Nations Millennium Summit held in September 2002. 
leaders from 189 countries signed a declaration pledging to reduce the number of people living below one US dollar a day to half of its 1990 figure by 2015. As per our national estimates, 26% of the population in India lives in poverty. Applying the World Bank standard, this figure goes up to around 35%. These figures are quite high considering the huge population of India. This brings us to the question, what are the main causes of poverty in India? During the colonial rule, the British suppressed local Indian handicrafts and industries. This led to a low economic growth and spread poverty in India. The slow economic growth in combination with scarcity of jobs and population explosion in India further worsened the poverty situation. Post-independence, the Green Revolution and the Industrial Revolution created many job opportunities in India. However, these were not enough to provide employment to all job seekers. Thus, Unemployment also contributed to poverty in India. The people migrating from villages to cities in search of better employment usually got engaged in jobs of casual labor. People with such irregular low paying jobs could not afford a decent living. And thus, poverty spread to urban areas too. Despite many government policies like land reforms, there is unequal distribution of resources in our society. A small number of wealthy people have control over large shares of resources, while a large number of people who have fewer resources live in poverty. Poor people often need to borrow money for marriages and religious ceremonies. Small farmers take loans to buy seeds and fertilizers every cropping season. This debt is usually taken from money lenders at high rates of interest and is a major reason for poverty in rural areas. Thus, the main causes of poverty in India are low economic growth during the colonial rule, population explosion, lack of job opportunities, irregular low paying employment, inequitable distribution of resources and indebtedness. Anti-poverty measures taken by the Indian government are based on two main objectives increasing economic growth in the country and launching anti-poverty programs for specific groups of people. Economic growth provides more resources and opportunities for human resource development like education, training and healthcare. All this results in reduction of poverty. This graph clearly shows the link between the increase in the growth rate of the economy and the decrease in the poverty ratio in India. However, economic growth plays only a limited role in the reduction of poverty. This is because the benefits of economic growth do not reach the poor directly. As a result, the growth in the agricultural sector, which employs the largest number of people in India, has been much below expectation. The government of India has launched several anti-poverty programs for specific groups of people. Let us learn more about some of them aimed at reducing rural poverty. A lasting solution to poverty is to enable the poor to become self-reliant. This is why several government schemes like the Prime Minister Rozgar Yojana Rural Employment Guarantee Program 
and Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana are aimed at generating self-employment opportunities in rural areas. The Prime Minister Rozgar Yojana was launched in 1993 to create self-employment opportunities for educated, unemployed youths in rural areas and small towns. This program assists such people in setting up small industries and business. The Rural Employment Guarantee Program, launched in 1995, also aims to generate self-employment opportunities in rural areas and small towns. The Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana, started in 1999, aims at organizing poor families into self-help groups and providing them bank loans and government subsidies to start small businesses and industries. The Antyodaya Anna Yojana was started in 2000 to provide food grains to poor families at subsidized rates. This scheme provides 35 kilograms of wheat or rice per month to families living below the poverty line through the public distribution system. The National Food for Work program was launched in 2004 in the 150 most backward districts of the country. This program provides employment to all unskilled people willing to do manual labor in return for wages in the form of food grains. The National Rural Employment Guarantee Act was passed in 2005. This act provides assured employment of 100 days per year to every household in rural areas. One third of these jobs are reserved for women. A person not provided employment within 15 days of registering under the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act is entitled to a daily unemployment allowance. The central and state governments have set up national and state employment guarantee funds for this purpose. Though the anti-poverty programs have benefited many, the overlapping of schemes and poor monitoring and implementation have prevented the benefits from reaching all the deserving poor. The traditional definition associates poverty only with the lack of income, food or clothing. This definition is now changing. Today, social scientists talk of human poverty that extends beyond the traditional definition of poverty to include lack of housing, education, healthcare, job security and lack of equal opportunities or dignity due to discrimination based on caste, color or gender. Providing minimum necessary income is comparatively easy. However, providing education, healthcare, job security, equal opportunities and dignity for the poor are the major challenges in the way of eradication of human poverty. India's future in combating poverty appears bright. Rising economic growth, falling population growth rate, radical schemes for free elementary education for all, and empowerment of women and the weaker sections of society should result in an appreciable reduction of poverty in the years to come.